JetBlue reported their third quarter financial results today, and they missed analyst estimates by quite a bit. The loss was greater than had been expected. And then on top of that, they said, well, the fourth quarter is actually going to be worse than analysts expect as well as the full year in terms of uh, earnings losses. And so I think that was much worse than anybody had expected. Some of the other um, mid-sized airlines had been talking about this excess capacity, uh, cutting of fares to try to fill the planes. But uh, I think JetBlue just in general uh, surprised everybody by the depth of the, the you know negative impact on their uh, financials. Is it basically because of stuff going on here at U.S. airports and U.S. demand specifically? Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, the larger carriers that have global networks um, reported record revenues and profits for the quarter and expect to do so for the full year. But airlines that are focused on the domestic market, the problem that they're having is they put too much capacity into those markets. Now demand is sliding. It's weakening, especially on uh, days of the week or weeks during the fall that people don't generally travel. It's gotten worse. And so uh, Spirit even said, you know, hey, even the traditional build up in, in fares and demand before the holidays. We're not seeing that this year. Interesting, interesting. Hey, also with us is Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Aerospace Defense and Airlines Analyst, George Ferguson uh, from our BI headquarters in Princeton, New Jersey. George, come on in on the conversation. What really jumped out for you at JetBlue? We've talked a little bit about these too many seats, staggering delays, the impact of the domestic U.S. market on JetBlue. But what for you was really dramatic here? I mean, I think you know, the, the the yield declines, you know, were the was what stuck out the most to me. Uh, I think it was what around thirteen percent uh, yield decline. Um, you know, I think I, I was catching the end of what, what Mary was saying there, but uh, I think the undertones I heard was uh, was all about you know leisure demand uh, and the problems around leisure demand. I think a lot of the airlines are just pointing too much of their capacity at similar places right now because there's only so many leisure destinations. And I think that's having you know a, pr a pretty big effect as well because I think business just hasn't come back a, a, as much as uh, everyone had hoped. And I think that's part of the problem with profitability in New York for them. And George, analysts have cautioned that airlines may have overdone it by adding U.S. flights this year. How much does that play into it when it comes to JetBlue specifically? Well, I mean, JetBlue, you know, a very domestic U.S. focused uh, airline. There's there's a there's a bit of Caribbean in it, uh, and they're trying to you know expand into Western Europe, uh, but that's very small right now. So you know, whatever is affecting the domestic market, uh, it's going to be really, really, really hard for JetBlue to avoid. I, I did think it was also interesting they talked about trying to pivot more into Europe. Uh, especially here during the winter season, I kind of feel like the European bounce might be over. I think, uh, I think flyers were willing to pay almost anything it took to get to Europe this summer because they they had a hankering, they hadn't been there for a while. But I feel like that pandemic frenzy, if you will, is probably done next summer, and so. Uh, I feel like any pivot there may be a bit too late. It's like chasing returns in a stock market. Uh, you know what I want to ask both of you? I feel like for such a long time, we all, all lauded JetBlue. They weren't, you know, they didn't have overhang from some of the, like the legacy carriers in terms of either worker costs, unions, they had new planes. Like there were all these, you know, kind of wonderful things playing in their favor. Mary, is some of what's going on with JetBlue is that they themselves are becoming more of a legacy carrier and it, it, it just maybe, or their, or their specific business approach just doesn't play as well? Well, you know, they um, do have some unions on their property now. And so they, they did call out labor cost increases as part of the problem this quarter, as well as fuel cost increases with the price of jet fuel going up. Um, but, you know, and they don't operate an exact hub and spoke system like some of the bigger airlines do, but they do have focus cities that they, that they, you know, concentrate a lot of their flights out of New York being one, Boston being another. And so, um, you know, they also called out, uh, ATC, uh, air traffic control delays in the New York area, which is one of the biggest um, or the biggest uh, aviation market in the country. And so there have been some restrictions on flying put in place there that JetBlue said they expect to last uh, all the way through the end of next year. Yeah, which always kind of freaks me out. I just want to get George, though, to weigh in on this whole idea of, you know, that JetBlue, right, was so different from the legacy carriers. There's a lot that's gone on, though, since JetBlue first hit uh, the runways. What's your take on that, that, you know, maybe some of what they're doing is it maybe needs a freshening up, if you will? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, right, because the, um, you know, the pilots, for example, 
Uh, in the past, if you're a smaller airline, maybe you could get away with paying your pilots a little bit less. Uh, but in a world now where we're, you know, we feel like we're constrained by pilots, uh, and you're recruiting, you, you need to push those salaries up as well. You know, to to recruit flight crew and keep them in your, uh, and keep you in, them in your airline. I mean, we're hearing hopping from pilots uh, that was unheard of, you know, a decade or two ago, hmm. uh, where even they, you know, they get into the they get into uh, a pilot job at, at a low cost carrier, uh, and then they'll hop again, right, and to, to a major like Delta American United. Seniority is everything in the pilot business. So when you get your job, you get a seniority number. As you climb the ladder, you can bid on uh, better trips. You can make your life easier based on that. So pilots traditionally hadn't moved. So I think JetBlue, you know, as we find ourselves constrained by things like pilots, as they get larger, um, you know, the, the work groups also want more pay commensurate with what the larger airlines in the country uh, have. And so, yeah, it's really, I think it's, it's a difficult uh, industry, I think, for, for um, you know, for carving out a special place for your labor costs or anything else now. It's, it's hard. Hey, Mary, how does this impact the outlook for ticket prices during the holidays? Well, you know, some of the carriers are saying that um, that demand, they believe demand is going to come back in the fourth quarter. And of course, if that happens um, and there's not too much capacity out there, then uh, fares could rise as they traditionally do. In fact, I had some information from Hopper uh, last week that said they do expect fares to rise as we get closer to the holidays. Uh, people, even though they may have been focusing on European travel over the summer, that when it comes to the winter holidays, they want to be home and they want to be with family. And so if that's correct and demand rises, then prices are probably going to rise as well. Hey, George, JetBlue, Spirit, is that going to happen? And the stock price of Spirit doesn't seem to indicate <laughs> that, right? And so, look, look, we hear a lot of chatter in the marketplace, yeah. right? The, the, there's a lot of challenges to this deal, right? Not, not the least of which uh, raising three to four billion dollars right now. I mean, if you even look at the prices that uh, companies are raising debt to buy airplanes, if you look at the United Double ETC deal, uh, that's almost a seven percent. Uh, um, yield to worse so that kind of insinuates that would be mm. uh, the cost to raise money for airplanes right now uh, it gets expensive to raise you know those large numbers at those percentage rates and make the whole thing work um uh, you know the market is 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 different too you know we're, we look like uh, there's too much capacity mm. so it feels like capacity needs to come out how much do you want to how much do you want to pay up for um you know for more airplanes and more capacity i, I don't know it's uh it's a rough uh, backdrop for that deal right now. 